Well, hello there, and welcome to the Sheet Music Art Studio. I'm back with another great drawing demo and some fun trivia from the movie Back to the Future. While you're here, please give me a thumbs up if you like what you see, and if you really want to get crazy, subscribe. Also, if you'd like an original custom-made sheet music piece, click the link in the description below after the video. So, grab a cup of coffee, relax, watch me draw, and discover 10 things you probably don't know about Back to the Future. Let's go to the drawing board. Number one, the movie almost didn't get made. Writer-producer Bob Gale had the idea for the film after finding his father's yearbook in the basement, seeing that he was somewhat of a nerd and wondering if they would have been friends if they'd been together at school. Gale and director Robert Zemeckis developed that idea into a movie screenplay and tried to find a studio who would let them make it. They tried and tried and tried again, failing miserably. Bob Gale told CNN in 2010. The script was rejected over 40 times by every major studio and by some more than once. We'd go back when they changed management. It was always one of two things. It was well, this is time travel, and those movies don't make any money. We got that a lot. We also got, there's a lot of sweetness to this. It's too nice. We want something raunchier, like Porky's. <laughs> that was a good movie. Um, back to Bob. Why don't you take it to Disney? After hearing that enough times, Gail and Zemeckis decided to do just that. This was before Michael Eisner went in and reinvented Disney. Gail told CNN, this was the last vestiges of the old Disney family regime. We went in to meet with an executive and he says, Are you guys nuts? Are you insane? We can't make a movie like this. You got the kid and the mother in his car. It's incest. This is Disney. It's too dirty for us. Eventually, Universal Studios decided to take a chance on the bizarre story. Thank God for that. Two, what's in a name? Though it's hard to imagine Back to the Future without its now classic title, not everyone was such a fan during production. Universal Studios executive Sid Sheinberg tried, unsuccessfully as you might have gathered, to change the name of the movie. His suggestion, Spacemen from Pluto. Ugh which would tie into Marty's jokes about being an alien. In a 2014 interview with Shortlist, Bob Gale admitted that he and Robert Zemeckis were at a bit of a loss over what to do with the title change suggestion. We took the memo to Steven Spielberg, who told us, don't worry, I know how to handle him, before writing a letter back which said, Hi Sid, thanks for your most humorous memo. We all got a big laugh out of it. Keep them coming. Steven knew he would be too embarrassed to say that he wanted us to take the letter seriously. Luckily, nobody questioned the title after that. Without Steven, it could have all been very different. Scheinberg did, however, make another important change to the film. Doc's dog, Einstein, was originally going to be a chimp named Shemp. After declaring that no movie with a chimpanzee had ever been a financial success, Scheinberg had the parts switched to a sheepdog. Number three, casting call. The list of actors who auditioned for the lead role is basically a who's who of mid 80s Hollywood. Johnny Depp, John Cusack, and even Ralph Macchio of Karate Kid fame tried out for the part. Eventual champ Michael J. Fox was offered the part first, but turned it down. He was too busy playing Alex P. Keaton on Family Ties. After lots of screen tests, the production team had it narrowed down to two actors. C. Thomas Howe and Eric Stoltz, and the winner was Stoltz. In fact, they shot much of the movie with Stoltz. Production began with Stoltz as the main McFly, but after six weeks of filming, it was clear the movie wasn't coming together. According to executive producer Steven Spielberg, director Robert Zemeckis didn't feel that the comedy was playing well enough. It cost the studio millions of dollars, said Zemeckis who admitted to having miscast the role. 
still, Universal agreed to do the reshoot with Fox, who at last agreed to do the movie despite an already overbooked schedule. Tim Robbins was in the running for the role of Biff Tannen, but it was Thomas Wilson who landed the role. He was actually named after a Universal executive named Ned Tannen, who had been particularly unpleasant to Zemeckis and Gale during a script meeting about the film I Want to Hold Your Hand. John Lithgow, Dudley Moore, and Jeff Goldblum were all considered for the role of Doc Brown, but ultimately, ultimately, ultimately it was Christopher Lloyd who played Marty's mentor and pal. Claudia Wells played Marty's girlfriend Jennifer in the first film, but not the sequels because her mother became ill and she decided to spend time with her. Elizabeth Shue took over the role for the second and third movies. Marty's dad in Back to the Future was Crispin Glover. It was one of his first acting roles, but he quickly earned a reputation as someone who was tough to work with. He was so nervous performing his lines and even lost his voice once that many of them had to be dubbed over via later recording sessions. Then, after the movie was a hit, he refused to come back for the sequels. I guess he said he didn't like the ending, which rewarded the characters with money instead of having love be enough. However, Robert Zemeckis says he demanded an outrageous salary and the studio told him to take a hike. The sequels had to be made with a different actor wearing a prosthetic mask made to resemble Glover's face. He did not appreciate being replaced like that and promptly sued Universal for using his likeness without permission. They settled for an undisclosed amount of money, but the lawsuit forced the Screen Actors Guild to make changes to their collective bargaining agreement to prevent similar situations in the future. In other acting starts, if you look carefully, you'll notice that Billy Zane, of Titanic fame, actually made his film debut by playing Match, one of Biff's flunkies. Zane wasn't the only uh, one to debut in Back to the Future. In the second movie, a young Elijah Wood can be seen playing an antique arcade game in a retro cafe. When Marty shows off his sharpshooting skills in the western theme game, an eight-year-old Wood scoffs at the ancient technology. Wood would shoot to incredible fame when he landed the leading role in the epic Lord of the Rings trilogy, although he was a well-established actor long before playing Mr. Frodo. And finally, the judge at the band auditions, who tells Marty he's too darn loud, is actually Huey Lewis, who contributed two songs to the soundtrack. Number four, Marty was going to originally be a much darker character. In an early draft of the screenplay, writer and producer Bob Gale said, Marty was so despondent about how messed up his life was, he was going to commit suicide. That was nixed as part of an effort to make the film funnier. Replacing Stoltz with Fox was also intended to emphasize the comedic side of the script and the inclusion of the line, when I kiss you, it's like I'm kissing my brother, helped dilute the creepiness of the incest subplot. Number five. And reshooting, the movie proved incredibly difficult. Because of Fox's busy schedule, most of his scenes had to be shot at night. All I remember is never seeing any daylight, Zemeckis told Empire in an oral history of the film. The biggest headache was the dinner table scenes at the beginning with everybody in makeup. Gail said of the grueling production schedule, we would rehearse the master shot at night with all the characters in it. Then Bob, Zemeckis, would start working the next day without Michael and shoot the coverage. We had a stand in doing Michael's lines. The actors had to play the scenes without Michael even being there. Number six, budget constraints actually made Back to the Future a better movie. According to Zemeckis, the end of the film was supposed to take place in Nevada with the necessary 1.21 gigawatts of time travel power provided by a nuclear test site. But because the studio was $5 million out of the budget, we had to come up with a different idea, he explained. Instead of going to another location, we put a clock on the courthouse. It's much better, tighter writing. It kept it all in Hill Valley. It kept it in the clock imagery. It was just better. Number seven. The famous DeLorean was supposed to be a refrigerator? 
In early iterations of the script, Doc's time machine was intended to be a time chamber made from a refrigerator. Well, sort of an old refrigerator. Way back in that second draft, it was going to be a time chamber, not unlike a refrigerator, and Doc Brown had to carry it on the back of his truck, Gale explained. Zemeckis and Gale decided to use the DeLorean because of its strange, futuristic look. The car's creator, John DeLorean, may have been the biggest Back to the Future fan of all. Only 9,000 DeLoreans were manufactured before production stopped in 1982 and DeLorean's subsequent arrest on drug trafficking charges spelled the end of his automobile business. He was later acquitted. John DeLorean wrote us a fan letter after the movie came out. Thank you for keeping my dream alive, Gale told the Los Angeles Times. Probably half of the people who own DeLoreans today own them because they saw Back to the Future. After the release of the film, DeLorean actually made body kits for their cars for people who wanted them to look more like the time machine in the movie. At one time, Ford offered Universal a bunch of money if they would change the time machine to a Ford Mustang. Zemeckis considered it, but eventually refused to compromise on the car he thought was perfect for the movie. Back to the Future is probably the only reason anyone even knows what a DeLorean is except any kid from the 80s. Number eight, Johnny Be Good was a pricey song choice. One of the coolest moments in Back to the Future was when Marty accidentally invents rock and roll at the Enchantment Under the Sea dance. Forced onto the stage, he rips into a cover of Chuck Berry's classic tune, Johnny Be Good. Michael J. Fox actually learned how to play guitar for this scene, but only well enough to look convincing on camera. It also wasn't really him singing the lyrics, which is weird. I always thought it was, but it, it wasn't. Anyway, the problem was that Barry almost didn't give the film permission to use the song. The entire crew was ready to shoot the scene, but the negotiations were still going on. They started making plans to proceed without the famous track. With time running out, Universal upped their offer to a cool $50,000. And you guessed it, Barry took the deal, and one of the movie's most memorable scenes was allowed to stay intact. Number 9. Ronald Reagan gave Back to the Future the presidential seal of approval. The film includes a little inside joke about Reagan's presidential prospects when the younger version of Doc Brown just can't believe that the actor might one day be commander-in-chief. Far from offended, Reagan was so amused that he asked his projectionist to replay the scene. Reagan even quoted from the movie in his 1986 State of the Union address. As they say in the film, Back to the Future, where we're going, we don't need roads, he quoted. And for number 10, here's a few did you knows. Did you know there's a nod to Stanley Kubrick in Doc's Garage? The amplifier has a CRM114 label, which is the name of a piece of radio equipment in Dr. Strangelove. Oh, huh. you knew that? Well, did you also know that Michael J. Fox is three years older than screen dad Crispin Glover? And how about this? The time between completion of shooting and the film's release was just 10 weeks. Not to mention that despite the sci-fi subject matter, there are only 32 effect shots in the whole movie. <sighs> and finally, Doc Brown's notable hunch came about because at six foot one inches tall, Christopher Lloyd is considerably taller than Michael J. Fox, who is five foot five, and they needed to look closer in size. Hey, thanks for hanging out with me for a few minutes. I hope you enjoyed the drawing and the info behind the film. Now, if you get a chance, check out these other videos to see more great art and fun facts about the movies and characters we all love. God bless everyone.